Hi, I am Semben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled First Impression of the Frequency Response Analyzer of Analog Arts SF880 Unit. Now let me start off with the description of a frequency response analyzer. What is it and how are we going to use it and what is it for? Now here is the unit and the purpose of this unit is to get the transfer function of a system. Suppose we have a system, there is an input, there is an output, and we would like to get the gain and phase, uh, the function of frequency uh, of this system. So this is the purpose of the frequency response analyzer. It has a excitation here, it's a signal coming in, a signal which is sensed here by the analyzer, that's a reference, and then it looks at the output, and then it'll sort of sweep the frequency and will calculate the output voltage over the reference, both for magnitude and phase. So this is the purpose of this uh, frequency response analyzer. It'll be very useful for filters uh, and many, many systems. Now I'm interested in uh, power electronics and the frequency response analyzer is very, very useful to get important information regarding control of uh, switch mode converters, resonant converters. And the reason is that you need to know uh, many transfer functions in order to stabilize the system and to get a good response. So here is a typical, say, a boost converter, and which is in closed loop. There is a um, feedback coming here. This is a control section, controller, the modulator, and then there's a driver. And uh, you like to get, for example, the transfer function between, say, here and here. This is the open loop transfer function. Or you like to get the uh, transfer function of the controller that you have built just to test it. Or you like to look at the closed loop response, the closed loop gain which can be done with an analyzer. For example, for the closed loop gain, an excitation will be imposed here, and then you look at the output voltage here, and divide it by this reference here, and this will give you actually the uh, A closed loop. Very, very important because you can see the crossover frequency, the phase margin, etc. So in power electronics, we do need the uh, open loop response, the controller, and closed loop response. For this, we might need a isolated injector, because many times, especially for the closed loop, we do have to inject the signal into a two points here, which are not ground, none of them is ground, so you need this sort of an isolated um, interface between the normally single-ended line that will come from the analyzer to the excitation. But this is an auxiliary unit and I'm not concerned about it and one reason I have not tested uh, this uh, unit on a switch mode converter is because I haven't built yet this uh, isolated injector. So the problem in uh, power electronics is to get the responses but there is a very big problem here and that is that the output signal, the typical output signal of a converter will have a high ripple or any other interference, or it could be like a resonant converter, it could have some uh, signal which are large, and when you inject this uh, signal, the probing signal by the analyzer, at the output uh, you might get at high frequency a very, very low signal, because uh, the converter is like a, a low pass filter, and at very high frequency uh, the attenuation is very high. So typically you might look at something like this, that is, this is the ripple at the output of the converter, and here is the remnant of this injection by the analyzer, and this is the actually the challenge of the analyzer. To extract this signal from this disturbance and to get correctly the magnitude and phase. So aside from, of course, you'd like the uh, frequency gain and phase to be accurate, uh, obviously, like the measurement to be accurate. More important is the ability 
of the system to combat this signal to noise ratio, which is very, very poor in power electronic uh, systems. And the analyzer should be able uh, to get the information in the presence of these high uh, interference uh, signals. So here is the unit we are talking about, which I've just got. And this is a made by Analog Arts. Um, it's designed and manufactured in the USA, that's what they say. And it's amazing. Uh, this little box uh, actually has eight functions in it. It's a PC-based unit connected with a USB. It's all uh, software-based here, and it can be operated as a two-channel oscilloscope, as an arbitrary waveform generator, frequency phase meter, spectrum analyzer, pattern generator, data recorder, logic analyzer, and frequency response analyzer, which I'm going to concentrate on in this presentation. I'm not going to talk about this. I haven't tested these. As a matter of fact, I just got this unit. So this is the very first impression of the unit, and especially the frequency response analyzer. Now, the specs are really very nice. Here we see the specs for the frequency response analyzer. This is the unit uh, that I have. Uh, the range of frequencies is between 1 Hz and 150 megahertz. Dynamic range is the ability to extract very small signal. is really impressing. It's uh, at low frequencies, it's uh, 190, 80, here it is, 180 dB. And at the very high frequency, it's uh, 70 dB, which is also very good for 150 megahertz. And then the gain accuracy is also very good. It's uh, below 0.2 for most of the range, and then it goes up to 1.5 dB uh, at the 150 megahertz, which is again uh, very good. Normally, the accuracy here is not the most important feature that we are looking for, although, of course, we like the unit to be accurate. And then we have the phase error, which is like 0.02, and then it goes to a maximum of 0.2, which is very nice. So this is very nice. Then it says that there is a common mode rejection ratio. To be honest, I'm not sure about this. This is a single-ended unit. I don't know what they are meaning. Perhaps they are meaning the extraction, the signal noise uh, capability of the unit. That is the extraction of the signal from the noise. Perhaps this is uh, the meaning of this thing. Otherwise, I can hardly understand uh, what it means common mode rejection because it's a single-ended unit. So we have a frequency source is the internal generator, it's a sine wave generator. The amplitude is uh, 0 0.05 uh, to 6 volt, can be selected. Uh, doesn't say what's the output in pins. I hope it is 50 ohms, I don't know. It's a, the signal there's an offset, that's not that important. Sweep could be linear or logarithmic. The, sweep increment could be by percent to and then you can actually choose the frequencies uh, the specific discrete frequencies that it will measure at so uh, there are many many options here and then the resolution of the measurement is up to one mega points of uh, this uh, digital discrete Fourier transformation which is the algorithm used to extract digitally the information uh, from the signal and, and this is very important of course what is important is the bottom line how well does it do the job and then it has an integration time between 10 milliseconds to 10 seconds this is again noise attenuation of course with 10 seconds then it will take you forever probably to end the switch so here is the unit it's a little box uh, five bnc connectors to it and at the bottom or at the back you have the USB and then you have the port for the logic analyzer which I have not tested and uh, this is part of the function that it can uh, sort of mimic and then I open the box and here it is in the inside the both sides of the board it's a single board and I might say it's a very well built unit there are no jumpers there are no repairs or modification it seems to, to be like a final version very neatly built, and I'm, to be honest, very much impressed considering the price of the unit. 
So this, this is the whole thing. Uh, it's based, of course, on process, digital processors and FPGAs. I have not looked into the construction or the circuit of the unit. I'm uh, more interested in the performance. So the test that I've conducted is really an RC circuit, very simple, for the reason I've mentioned. Uh, I'm not prepared now to do already a good uh, test on a, a power supply, but I've tried to mimic what we are going to expect uh, to see in a power supply. So what we have here is an RC circuit. This is the frequency response analyzer. This is the excitation, the reference going in, the out, again, sense that the output, here it is, this, this is the RC circuit. The breakpoint is about 1.7 kilohertz um, of this unit. This is pretty much like a response of a, um, like a closed loop uh, response of a converter. And then we have a signal generator here with a square wave, which is injecting here, sort of to speak, noise or interfering signal. That is the analyzer is sending a signal from here to the output, and here I'm superimposing on it this signal, which is large. So what I'm expecting to see here is something like this. This is the signal generator, or what's left of it, and then the in injection or the uh, after attenuation of this uh, frequency series. And then we have a scope here to look at both this point and this point. So here it is. This is the excitation of 3 hertz. That's below the break point. So there's no attenuation here. The yellow is the excitation. The green is the output signal. What we see here is that the output signal has an added um, excitation or what comes out of the uh, analyzer. Now the noise, so to speak, is 2 volt peak to peak and also the excitation is about uh, 2 volt peak to peak and here the frequency of 3 hertz. Now 40 hertz doesn't change much because we are still below the break point. We have a uh, the excitation, the yellow, and then the output signal, uh, the green. Here is 250 hertz. We are approaching uh, the breakpoint, but what I'm seeing now is really the uh, square wave after passing the low pass filter, and you can see again also the um, excitation signal after passing the RC signal, uh, circuit. And here it is at high frequency. This is 50 kilohertz. Now we see very large interfering signal imposed on it, or added to it, is the uh, little remnant of the excitation from the frequency response analyzer. This is after passing uh, the low pass filter. The breakpoint is 1.7 kilohertz, so at 50 kilohertz it's attenuating it pretty much. And what is left here is about 100 millivolt peak to peak. And comparing it to this uh, total noise, so to speak, we are getting minus 26 dB uh, of signal to noise ratio. So. Here is the output of the uh, analyzer. I should say that the um, window is very nice, very well organized, very nicely set up, uh, very intuitive. You can understand what's going on. You, you really don't have to read the manual. You just look at these and you understand what you have to do. And also here, the run and some other uh, buttons here. Uh, then here it is. This is the amplitude, this is the gain amplitude, and this is the phase. Uh, we see the break at uh, about 1.7 kilohertz, and of course the phase shift of 45 degree, everything is fine. This is one kilohertz. Now we see here a peak and here is a peak, and the reason for that is really because we're injecting a very large single frequency signal at one kilohertz. This is the interference signal, so it's really very difficult for the unit to get rid of it because it's just about one kilohertz. So I wouldn't worry about this. Uh, this is nothing that you'll see at uh, real uh, measurement usually. And in the, in the case of PWM, the interference signal is at much, much higher frequency. This is it, which is pretty good. You see that the lines are pretty uh, straight. There's, you know, doesn't seem that there is any problem with, with the uh, extraction of the signal, signal to noise ratio, even here, which is already uh, down quite a bit here, 
is, is pretty nice, so we are in, in good shape here. Now, in this case, the second case, I have lowered the excitation to 150 millivolt. It was 2 volt, now it's 150 volts. So obviously, the output signal will be very low. So this is low frequency. We see the, this is the, the interfering noise, the green. This is the excitation. And we see the excitation is much smaller than the, uh, this is the 150 millivolt, and this is the 2 volts, peak to peak. And this is the high frequency. So here we can barely see the excitation, the remnant of it. You just don't see it. It's just a bunch of noise here. And um, this is the signal, the excitation, and this is the interference signal. So here we have a, a very, very, very poor signal to noise ratio. So here it is now, in this case. Also, we got a pretty decent curve. Again, we have this uh, interference both here and the harmonics of, of this thing, which again, I wouldn't blame the unit. Uh, that's a very harsh uh, test. So just forget about these. You won't see it in, in real systems. And here we see a little bit of wiggling because of the lower signal. And here it is too. Not so bad. We see it also here, of course, and a little bit also here. So what happened now is that we had at the earlier we have 26 minus 26 dB signal to noise at the output. Now I have lowered the excitation to 150 millivolt from 2 volts, so it is down 22 dB. So I'm adding now the 26 dB I got earlier with the 22 dB due to the attenuation of the signal, and we are talking now about approximately approaching 50 minus 50 dB, which is pretty good. This is, uh, if it would have been for a power supply, this would be uh, pretty decent in, in most cases, although it seems that the unit is capable of doing better than that. So what are the conclusions? Um, for a general use or general purpose, frequency response ammo, it seems to be a very good unit. There's no question about it without, say, interfering the noise, the very large interfering noise. And it is, like, very, very promising for power electronics application. I have not tested it, but I would guess that it'll be okay. And then, uh, just to note that I've tested it to 100 kilohertz, uh, the specified range in 1 hertz to 150 megahertz. Well, for power electronics, this is really not required. I have not tested it on switch mode system, and there is a need for a isolated injector in order to do a decent work with a, a switch mode uh, system, which I hopefully will do in the future. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it interesting, and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.